Hey guys, this is Zach with Next Tech News, and this is the third part of my Mac Pro clone series. Um, in this, in the last part, obviously, I finished building in the iMagic Pi case to make a Mac Pro clone, um, and basically, I finally got the water cooler in there, got the graphics card in there, and it's all good to go. So this video is going to be about the thermals of the machine. Um, so seeing where those kind of are, because obviously everything is very compact in there. Um, water cooler is going to help a ton with the CPU temperature, because I'm sure it would be terrible if there was no water cooler in there, because there's very little airflow. Um, and we're going to see kind of where I can overclock the CPU, since I do have a water cooler in there. And, um, you know, what the general idea of performance is. I'm not going to do a ton of benchmarks. Just a couple 3D Mark ones like uh, Time Spy and Fire Strike Ultra and stuff like that, just to kind of get a general idea of the performance of this machine. Um, but that's what this video is going to be about. So let's go. So. Already I've got the temperatures pulled up here. I don't know if you guys can see that really, um, but anyways, I'll tell you. Basically, they're all hovering around 30 to 33 degrees. The highest core right now is at 33, 34 at the most, um, and the lowest is around 30 degrees. Um, these are Celsius temperatures, obviously, which is most um, computer temperatures are always gonna be measured in Celsius. Um, but that's actually not bad especially for how little airflow goes through this case, that's actually pretty positive. So I think I can actually get a decent overclock with those temperatures starting out. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and reboot this system, get into the BIOS settings, do an overclock, and see where we can get this thing, and then see what the temperatures are when we're back to normal. So let's go. So now I have it overclocked to 4.6 megahertz. Um, so that's pretty solid. It's 4.6 and then it's also clocked at uh, 1.35 volts. Um, so we should see, I'm gonna see what the temperatures are now. Um, if you guys can see it now, they're hovering around 45 at the highest, um, but they're usually around the high 30s right now. Um, so we're gonna run a Cinebench, um, both its CPU stress test and then the GPU stress test as well just to kind of get a general idea of this, if this is a stable overclock and kind of get a general idea of what um, the performance is of this. And then I tried running um, 3D Mark actually just a second ago and it wasn't working at all. It has that um, error where it just keeps checking your, your system um, and it will never start the benchmark. So I'm gonna disregard those. Um, I know I said I was gonna do those benchmarks earlier but clearly that's not gonna work out. So I'm going to use the Heaven Benchmark instead, um, just to get a general idea of the performance of this rig. And then we'll call it a day. So let's get going. So this is already pretty positive. About the highest temperature I'm seeing right now is 86 degrees. Um, and this is full of blown CPU stress test. CPU is at 100% and running at 46 megahertz. Um, so that's pretty impressive, um, especially since there's very little airflow in this thing. It's literally just that water cooler keeping it cool. So that is pretty impressive. So let's see what the score ends up being. And you can hear that the fans aren't the quietest I you've ever, I've ever seen in a case, um, but they're not bad, especially for it only having one true fan besides the GPU's fan in here. Um, it looks like it scored a 909 this time, which isn't terrible or anything like that. Um, it's about the same as what the i7 scored in my i7 versus i5 video. So let's run it a couple more times and just see where it goes from there. It is getting a little hotter than you'd exactly want for a uh, processor. 
I'd say probably 4.5 gigahertz would be a better um, representation of what you really want to be at, but this still isn't that bad. It's not, hasn't broken into the 90 degrees yet, so that's not terrible. And another 905, which isn't bad. I'll run it one more time and just to see one more last test, and then we'll switch to the OpenGL one. Alright, so it does look like after running it a couple times, it is thermal throttling a little bit. Um, I did run it once before I started filming at a thousand um, CB, so it is thermal throttling a little bit if it's averaging 905 right now. I think it's about to score that again because it's hitting 90 degrees and 907, yeah. So it is thermal throttling a little bit at 4.6 gigahertz, um, but you know, you can lower that a little bit and you'd probably be probably right around 4.3 for an overclock or maybe maybe still 4.5, but 4.6 seems to be thermal throttling it a little bit. So um, you would wanna back off on the overclock a little bit. It's a stable overclock, but it's not one that's gonna perform admirably. Um, so I'm gonna go run the OpenGL one now and see how that performs. And like with most games, you can already tell right off the bat that the temperature is gonna be pretty fine for gaming. Um, honestly, you probably could even leave it at 4.6 gigahertz for gaming if that's all you're gonna be doing, nothing super CPU intensive, because this game's only putting 27% load on the CPU. Um, and it's still running at a pretty decent temperature. The max temperature I've seen so far is 75 degrees Celsius, which isn't that bad. There's no thermal throttling going on right now. So we'll see again when we hit heaven benchmark, which is a little bit more intensive. Um, but I'm actually extremely impressed with this rig. And the 1050, the GTX 1050 Ti is actually pretty impressive. It just scored 151 FPS, which is extremely good. So let's try Heaven Benchmark and we'll see where that goes. So I'm gonna set everything to its maximum pretty much, um, just to get kind of a general idea of what kind of performance you can get out of this thing. And let's set the resolution to 1080p, just because um, I know this card is not made for more than 1080p, so 1080p is going to be the best kind of performance you're going to get out of it. Um, but I am going to set all the quality settings and all that to the maximum. So let's run it and see how this works. So in Heaven Benchmark, it scored 49.8 FPS, which is extremely impressive, even if it is 1080p. I mean, this card is super tiny. I mean, it is literally like this big, and it scored 50 FPS at 1080p. Honestly, I agree with a lot of other reviewers in saying that the 1050 Ti is a great card for 1080p gaming. And honestly, for this rig, I'm... I'm actually extremely impressed with it. The thermals are a little bit higher than normal, but I mean, look at it. There's not very much cooling going on here. Um, literally, you got the water cooler down here and that's about it. Um, so honestly, I've been extremely impressed with this machine and I'm really curious what you guys think of it. Like, I mean, this thing could be a great editing rig, um, great 1080p gaming rig. Like, it's, I mean, it's portable great for LAN parties, I mean, really. And I mean, clearly it looks just like the Mac Pro. It is a little bit bigger than the Mac Pro. The Mac Pro is a little bit shorter and a little bit less wide, but obviously you can't get that quite same triangular design that's in the Mac Pro to make it smaller. Um, to use ITX components and everything, you're gonna have to get a little bit bigger. But I was, Extremely impressed with this machine. I hope you guys were too. And this is the end of part three of my series about the Mac Pro um, clone build. Um, again, this is in the iMagic Pi case. And I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, this three part series. 
I had a lot of fun making it and everything, and I hope you guys have a lot of questions because I have lots of answers to answer about this machine. So, this is Zach with Next Tech News. See ya!